Hi, I'm Rachel Clare. Thanks for joining with me today. And I want to talk about something in particular. So I recently shared a blog post about the fact that when I was two years old, my father left, or as my mother would say, uh, she left him. <laughs> so uh, either way, my father was gone when I was two. And he was never really much in my life after that. So I shared that because I actually, for the first time recently, was in a counseling session and just really allowed myself the space to feel that. And I want to speak to something that I think many conscious people do and is something in the New Age. In the New Age, it's like we want to focus on the light or we don't want to stay stuck in the story. Or we, you know, if you're like me, what came up for me in my therapist's office was how selfish am I? How self-involved and self-absorbed? How ridiculous that I'm paying someone to listen to some sob story about a girl who was two. I'm fine. I'm older now. I'm an adult. You know, it's fine. But that's not the truth. The truth is that when I'm in relationship, there are certain ways that I behave. There are certain men I'm attracted to. And we know from psychology and from our patterns and the way that we are so influenced as small beings, we know that our formative years have such a tremendous impact. And neuroscience is catching up to what many of us have known, that we're bodies first. We're these energetic mammals who feel. And we lay down the neural pathways based on our trauma or our experiences. So it's not enough to just say a mantra over and over, or I'm just going to focus on the light, or I'm just going to be happy, and then expect that that's going to do the trick because our subconscious mind is so powerful. It's so powerful. So what I really want to express to you today is don't buy it. Don't buy that you just have to be happy. The truth is, if you experienced pain or loss or trauma, that's in your body. It's in your imprinting. It's in your neural pathways. It's influenced the way that you live and the way that you think. And if you're struggling or you attract the same type of relationships that are painful or you have experienced loss and you're really in it, we need space to feel that and grieve that. We have to. So for me, I had never allowed myself to really grieve that. The two-year-old does with that whatever she will, which is kind of like stuff it and, and who knows, you know, she internalizes it and it's very painful and she doesn't really have a lot of capacities to deal with it. And as I grew, the adult took over and it became oh, I'm intellectual enough to know and spiritual enough to know that that was then and this is now and don't dwell in the past and don't stay stuck in the story and my father was abused, so how could he do better? So let's just forgive him and I'm fine. Meanwhile, you know, my whole life, the thing has been my romantic relationships. You know, that's the area where I have experienced my most pain and upset and frustration and drama and not having it go the way I want. You know, I, I have a beautiful home that I own. I have a wonderful career. I'm successful. I'm talented. I work on many things. I'm super creative. But my romantic life, that has been the area. So there comes a time when we have to just own that there's pain inside that needs to be felt that needs to be heard. So I got to sit in my therapist's office and she helped me see that for the first time ever in my life, I allowed someone to see me and witness me in my deepest pain, my deepest wound. The most painful thing I've ever experienced in my life was my father leaving when I was two. And trying to ignore that isn't going to help. What becomes possible when I get to say, that sucked, that hurt, 
losing a parent when you're two years old at any age, but when you're two? How painful is that? How hard was that? Do I not ever get to tell that story? Do I not ever get to acknowledge that? Do I not ever get to say that because I'm trying to like be awake or be love or just focus on the light? No. We are mammals. And as such, we have feelings. And relationships trigger our feelings. And when we have loss and pain and we're hurting, we need to feel those. That's the richness of life. That's the point of being human, is being here and being anchored into our bodies and allowing ourselves to feel. Joseph Campbell said, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. We want to go in. The only way out is through. So I got to be witnessed, and I'm telling my story for the first time ever. You can't know me. You can't know Rachel without knowing that Rachel lost her father when she was two years old and experienced tremendous loss. That's a part of who I am. Is it the story that I'm going to stay stuck in? No. Do I get to tell the story for the first time ever at age 35? Yes. I just told my mom the other day, for the first time, I actually admitted to my own mother, Mom, I loved my father and it hurt when he left. And that's why I've had a lot of pain and sadness and anger. I'm 35. I've never said that to her. My whole life I wanted her to be okay and him to be okay and I forgive because that's what I should do and I'm okay and I don't want anyone to judge me and think that I'm a mess or a wreck so I'll just pretend. Yet underneath there's this wounded place and we all are wounded. It's an archetype that we all have. So please, if you've never told your story, tell it. If you've never been witnessed, get witnessed. If you've never entered a space of non-judgment and healing and love where you can just finally be you and share your most intimate, deepest wound with someone, it's time because that's the cave you fear to enter. The worst thing we fear is feeling pain. We don't want to feel pain, but that's where we get to heal. And the depth of our grief, going into that grief, is equal to the depth of our love and our compassion. But if we don't go into that grief and ever have it be felt, then we might be just unconsciously holding up barriers and walls and protecting ourselves because we're afraid to attach because we don't ever want to lose again, so we never really let anyone in and we never really love, and then we never get to feel or experience other people's love. So I'm doing the work of you know, opening the gaping wound so that I can really heal it, so I can really allow for the love that's in my life to come in and actually feel it. But I had to go back. It's shamanic. It's reclaiming lost soul parts. It's going back to the past to places where we disembodied, disengaged, disallowed, hid in the back or shadow. Put on a happy face. I'm great. I have no pain. It's like ironically, often the happiest person in the room probably has the deepest pain. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. Thanks for joining with me today. And if you would like to enter a space of non judgment and healing and love and actually be witnessed in your pain and see what arises and move energy and heal, click on my free report, download it. Have a free session with me. Let's see if I can serve you or get a reading. I'd love to enter that space and be the space in which you get to be witnessed and you get to heal. Namaste.